All right, so now let's take a look at some of the different types of firewalls. Uh, some of these I'll just touch on briefly here, and then we're going to cover them in a lot more detail in upcoming nuggets here. Um, however, the first one we're talking about here is packet filtering. It's a lot of what I discussed in our last nugget. So, for example, if it was expecting to see something on a certain port to allow or deny, then that would be part of what packet filtering does. And packet filtering, really what it does is it looks at the packet. This might be the packet right here. And the packet will also include a header. Okay? That header will include several different pieces of data. So it's going to be the source IP address, the destination IP address, the port, and uh, what's the other one? The protocol. Okay, <laughs> the protocol. So it'd be like a TCP or UDP or whatever. Okay, normally it's going to be TCP or UDP. So anyway, the packet filtering firewall really primarily just looks at the header information and makes its decisions based on that. So if traffic's coming from a source IP address that we are allowing, it'll pass through. If we're not allowing it, it'll block it. Same with destination. If it's allowing traffic to that destination, then it will pass the traffic on through. If it's not being allowed to that destination, it'll block it. Same with ports. If the port number is allowed, it'll pass through. So, for example, if we're allowing SSH traffic, it would allow TCP port 22. Uh, and then again, whatever kind of a protocol is involved. So that's basically packet filtering. There's also an application firewall, which we'll definitely cover in some more detail here uh, coming up. All right, stateful inspection. What's that about? So the things we were looking at a moment ago relating to uh, packet filtering didn't have anything to do with an application itself. So, for example, if we see... Oh, if we see traffic coming in on, let's say, TCP port 1433, which is a common SQL port, SQL database port, um, we see traffic coming in on that, but there's suspicious, suspicious how do you say the word? Suspicious huh, contents in the packet itself. Because remember, normally packet filtering only looks at the header right here, but the application le level, excuse me, sta stateful inspection firewall can look at the contents of the packet and it could say, uh oh, looks like there's a cross site scripting attack in there. So, guess what we're going to do? We're going to drop that packet. Uh, so, that's the kind of thing it can do. It can examine the contents. It can kind of, in a certain way, establish motive of what's going on inside of that packet, whether it's something malicious, for example. Or, I guess in this case of SQL, it'd be more likely to say is a SQL injection. Let me put that on there. A SQL injection in that pack would be much more likely, I guess. And then there's stateful inspection. Now, what's that about? Uh, well, with this, uh, normally when we have clients in our LAN right here, and they're going through our firewall, and then we have, you know, let's just say a website out here somewhere. Uh, when they do that, what, keeps, what happens here is the firewall uh, keeps a table, a state table of outbound connections that are sourced from the local area network. And what's the significance of that? Uh, that would prevent somebody, just some you know interloper out here, uh, some hacker or whatever, from making an inbound connection on port 80 or 443, which would normally be this website, for example, because this is unsolicited. We never heard of this person. And all of a sudden, they're trying to make an inbound shot at our firewall um, with port 80 or 443. Well, probably our firewall blocks port 80 and 443 unless you have an internal website, right? Okay, so that's probably going to be blocked. However, if we requested a website through port 40 or 8, four, <laughs> I can say it, 40 or 443, that's not right either, 80 or 443, uh, then it knows that, oh, we already requested that from a website. So only on this outbound and then the subsequent inbound reply connection are we going to allow that to return to its original host. Okay. So in other words, if this host originally requested this website using these ports, then it will allow the return traffic back to that host. But if it's unsolicited, then we will deny that. And there's more to stateful inspection. can also involve packet deep packet analysis. can dynamically create rules as it goes, depending upon the context of what connections are already there. And some of them may also do more packet analysis to determine if there is any uh, malware in the packets. Uh, and that would be at the application layer. But there's more to that that we'll discuss further on. Uh, next generation firewall. These are probably the sexiest firewalls out there. <laughs> can I, can I, am I allowed to say the word sexy in video? Okay. As long as it has to do with technology, they tell me I can. All right. But next generation firewalls, 
do just about everything we'll describe in the entire topic of firewalls. They're the most full-featured type, and they're the most intelligent, uh, and they have the most flexibility in how you can configure them. Uh, we'll talk more about those later on. So let's also look at some packet filtering vulnerabilities, starting with IP spoofing. So remember, we have our packet here, and then we have the header right here. Uh, remember, this is where you got the source and destination IP address. Well, a hacker may be able to intercept and manipulate a packet and adjust this header so it shows a different source IP address or a different destination IP address, and thereby allowing it to kind of hopscotch its way through the firewall when it might not normally be able to do so. Okay, You can imagine some other ways this could be used. So maybe the source is as intended, but the answer, the reply that we're expecting from the host that we're communicating with should go to this host right here. This is the original intended intended host. Okay, let's say it's got some IP address that ends in dot ten. However, if the hacker gets a hold of the packet and manipulates the destination, which is at dot ten over here, the way it's intended, they might intercept it and instead send it to a fake host or somebody that's doing intercepting traffic or proxying it and then forwarding it onto its actual destination like this. Maybe this is dot eleven or any other IP address, doesn't matter what it is. So now with IP spoofing, they can take that packet, inspect it, manipulate it, change data in it, change prices in it, change whatever they want to in it, and then potentially forward it on to the intended host so that really kind of nobody could tell that anything went wrong. Okay? Or they might just be doing this to eavesdrop and not really changing any data except for the header information. So they're just doing that alone and intercepting data as it goes. So that's a potential vulnerability there. The other thing we might have here would be source routing specifications. So if I've got a router right here, I've got another router right here, and this one here is restrictive, and this one's permissive. Okay, so in other words, if we have someone trying to communicate with the network in here, okay, with servers and hosts and everything attached to it, maybe the normal route for the traffic would have been to go through the restrictive router, but based upon who we are or the source IP address that we have or whatever, uh, we might get blocked right there. So what could happen instead is if there's this other router down here, but it's designed to trust routes from this dust, this source, maybe we can malform a packet to fool it into thinking that it came from this router right here when it really did not. And therefore, this router here will forward it on to the rest of the network thinking that it came from here. It's a little oversimplified, but that's the basic idea of how source routing can be manipulated there. Okay. Then there's the miniature fragment attack. So this one, it has to do with IP fragmentation. Okay. So I'm going to oversimplify this, but you know, we have our a packet and you know, we have our header right here, but maybe instead of sending this whole packet through as is, it is possible. And there's sometimes there's probably legitimate needs for this. We could divide that up or split that up into multiple pieces. So now we fragmented this packet. And more than likely, we'd also have to repeat the header information on the front of each one of those. I'm just not going to draw it all in. Anyway, so what can happen here is the router can read the, through the first few, and then after a certain point, just might allow the rest of these to pass through uninspected. So in other words, if it sees that the first few packets are legit, then it might allow the rest of the packets to go through, uh, like I said, uninspected, and there might be some kind of malicious something or another in there that we don't really want in. or someone is being able to transit the, the firewall when we would not normally have allowed them to transit that firewall. So those are some of the types of firewalls you have uh, in terms of their basic functionality. In our next night, we'll take a look at hardware firewalls. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from CBT Nuggets. Also, if you're new to IT or are interested in an IT career, visit cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free trial.